Welcome to this another Kumpo channel video and now we'll be looking at the microorganism in the environment. So as I've discussed before in my pre previous video, the earth is made up of microbes. They are present everywhere. In fact, they, they make up this earth as large numbers. So one can think of microbes beyond the world in which we all live from earth to space so the earth as we all know that earth is known as the closed system where material cycle between lithosphere uh, atmosphere hydrosphere and the biosphere so together they make up all the components of both living and unliving things so earth produces everything it needs to ensure the survival and growth of its Residents. Indigenous microorganisms as environment protectors. So, environmental protection has the foremost importance in the presence of mankind. So, scientists have been searching for technologies naturally available for enhancement of agriculture and agricultural waste. So, the good example of the in discovery of the scientists are the I IMOs, which is the indigenous microorganisms, which are applied in the Western world as the extraction of minerals for the enhancement of agriculture and waste management. So these microorganisms are a group of innate microbial consortium that inhabits the soil and surfaces of all living and non-living, which chance the potentially of biodegradation, bioleaching, and biodecomposing, nitrogen fixation, improving soil fertility, and production of plant growth hormones. So just imagine if life without these microorganisms or these microbes, life will be arranged and melancholically on this lively planet for the survival of human race. So these indigenous microorganisms are used for safe safeguarding for the survival of the human race. So application of microorganisms in a culture these microorganisms applied for making biofertilizers, bioinsecticides, bioherbicides, and biopesticides. So for biofertilizers, they use the phosphate and nitrogen, which are important for the growth of plants. And this compound exists naturally in the environment, but plants have limited limited access to extract this this compound. So phosphate plays important role in crop stress tolerance, maturity of plants, the quality of plants, and direct and indirect for nitrogen fixation. So the fungus which is responsible for these biofertilizers, fungus penicillin villi which helps unlock the phosphate from the soil. It makes an organic acid that dissolves phosphate in the soil so that the roots can use it. Microorganisms found in the soil are not also friendly in our plants. In fact, some of them have the pathogens to cause diseases to our plants. So, scientists have created or developed a biological tools which use this disease causing microbes to control weeds and pests naturally. There is also a bioherbicide. So the major problems of the farmers, as we all know, are the weeds because they compete with crops, nutrients, water, sunlight, space, and they also harbor disease pests. They clog the irrigation and drainage system and worst the low quality of product or low quality of, of the crop. So bioherbicides are ch cheap and can survive to the environment long enough for the next growing season. So it is not also harmful for our environment compared to the, the conventional herbicides. 
the five major biogeochemical cycle, the carbon cycle, the water cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus, and sulfur cycle. For carbon cycle, the atmosphere. Now let's see how the microbes um, take an action in this carbon cycle. So I have here a diagram. So the at atmosphere is full of carbon dioxide, goes to the photosynthesis, and then carbon dioxide is fixed in plants and also for some algae and photosynthetic bacteria. Then there is energy transferred to animals and these plants and animals after death they become subjected to microbial decomposition. So as a result, there is there is a organic matter in the soil. Now, how this carbon dioxide fix in the plants to algae and how did this carbon dioxide return to the atmosphere? It is made possible because of respiration. So respiration on, on plants, animals, and microbes. So the autotrophic microbes are responsible also for releasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So this is the nutshell here of carbon cycle. So microbes involved in decomposition, fungi and bacteria. Fungi are example, we have the trichoderma, aspergillus, and penicillium and the fusarium and cateterium and etc. For bacteria, we have an example of Clostridium, Streptomyces, Bacillus, and Pseudomonas, and Mucorchidia, and etc. Now, let's proceed to the phosphorus and sulfur cycle. And phosphorus is an important constituent of protoplasm and required for metabolism of all living organisms. Though it is found in the soil, its major storehouse is in rock deposits so agricultural crops contain only 0.50 percent of this phosphorus in their tissues in the form of several compounds this phosphorus occurs in the soil in organic and organic forms now organic phosphorus containing compounds are derived from plants and microorganisms composed of phospholipids coenzymes, fitin, and other compounds. In soil, phosphorus are about 15 to 85 percent total of phosphorus is organic, which is unavailable for plants and unless microbes convert it into an organic form. Phosphate to be soluble, it requires acid production. The species responsible for this are the Pseudomonas, Bacillus, and Flavobacterium, Mycobacterium, and Micrococcus, and Penicillium, and etc. They are associated with phosphorus conversion. So, there's also a fungi involved here, which is the mycorrhizal fungi, play a key role in making the phosphorus available for host plants. The source of organic form of phosphate are phosphate rocks. Then, this chemical fix to become available to plants through the action of microorganisms. From plants to move to animals, then we get the phosphorus back in the soil, then these plants and animals. After death, they have, after death, they are microbiologically degraded and mineralization occur and immobilization occur. So now let's take a look at the sulfur cycles. I have a diagram here. On one side, we have the assim assimilation and the other side, we have the decomposition. So the sulfur, it oxidize the sulfate. Plants and bacteria can take this form, sulfate, and convert it to be an uh, organic form. Then the sulfur compound can be decomposed by fungi and bacteria and this then this hydrogen sulfides can be further oxidized to sulfur by lithotrophic bacteria and photosynthetic bacteria and that's how the sulfur cycle happens. And there are four distinct transformation of sulfur. First is decomposition of 
and mineralization and the other one is immo immobilization oxidation of inorganic ions compounds sulfides and thiosulfides and the last one is the reduction of sulfides and sulfates now let's take a look at the nitrogen cycle which is the exciting one this nitrogen is abundant in the air it is extremely important for proper functioning of our cells because proteins are made up of nucleic I mean amino acids which are made up of um, nitrogen molecules so we get the nitrogen by eating uh, plants vegetables fruits through nitrogen even though this nitrogen is abundant in the air the plants cannot take directly the nitrogen from the air but because of the microorganisms it made possible for them to get this nitrogen through the process of nitrogen fixation which is converting the element into a usable form now microorganisms like bacteria and fungi present in the soil are called nitrogen fixers converting the nitrogen into a nitrate nitrite and ammonia and these plants these compounds will be absorbed by our plants using their roots and now plants can synthesize the proteins and these proteins are available now for the consumers like us humans so i have a diagram here so in nitrogen cycle some plants have legumes and this Leguminous plants have the presence of rhizobium bacteria left in it. In the case of non-leguminous uh, plants, the nitrogen-fixing bacteria and blue-green algae will now enter in the picture so that the microorganisms will convert the nitrogen into usable compounds. These compounds will be absorbed by the non-leguminous plants. Then the animals come, consume these plants, then nitrogen enters in the body and then through decomposition the nitrogen that was consumed by the animals will then decompose decomposition takes place and then microorganisms again will break down the previous compounds that was consumed by the also an interesting one uh, bacteria present in the soil which are the denitrifying bacteria this one, this bacteria doesn't wait for the decomposition process. So to sum up, the microbes play a leading role in countless natural processes. They maintain the soil fertility and soil health. They clean up all the dead organic material. Without them, we would be up to our ears in the dead things like our ancestors. And they fix gaseous nitrogen into forms that can be used by our plants and they are the prime food for marine and uh, freshwater life and they are also used for extraction of minerals.